So I'm, I'm starting the first family today. And out of these two topics has been already done. So now I'll be talking about the third topic. And third topic will be the test case of number of zero. Now what I mean to say that number of zeros, whenever I talk about number of zeros, we try to calculate number of trailing zeros. What, what is the meaning of this trailing zeros there? Trailing zero means the zero which is coming in the end of the number. Example. Let me give you an example here. I have two, five, zero. So what is a trailing zero here? I have only one trailing zero. So entire uh, uh, concept about this today, uh, lecture will be talking about this, how many zeros will be coming in the end. If I talk about a number like this, two, five, zero, five, these, these, these zeros are not getting uh, counted in my trailing zeros. We are not worried about these zeros. We will only be worried about the zero which is coming in the last. Either unit is place or tens, place or thousand, place or hundred, place, whichever place. But I'm talking about the zero which is coming in the last, which we call it as trailing zeros. Is that clear to every one of you? So whenever I talk about trailing zeros, so always every one of you understand. Trailing zero means the zero which is coming in the in the in the in the last of the question. So next time I'll not be using that trailing zeros number term. I'll be directly using number of zeros, and I'll be talking about how many zeros are there in which kind of a problem. Again, let me tell you, if you talk about the concept, generally the questions are based upon board mass tool. I'll be I'll be telling taking you through the board mass rule concept. Or the questions will be based upon the basic multiplication, or we call it as factorials. If you talk about factorials, I hope every one of you know that factorial is nothing but a multiplication of series of a number. Like 5 factorial is nothing but 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. So consecutive number multiplication is called as factorial from 1 till the end. That's how it goes. So here in this topic, there will be two varieties of question. Question number one, which is based upon the board mass rule. Question number two, which will be based upon something called as factorial. Even in board mass rule, we'll be only focusing upon multiplication uh, in detail. Because addition and subtraction, uh, it, it won't be there in the examination. In examination, we should not worry about that. So this is the basic for your, uh, for your understanding. Now, if you talk about what is the theory in this one, sir? In this one also, there is only one line of the theory which you people need to understand. You are counting what? You are counting something called as a number of zeros. So just think in your mind that how you can obtain zero. Your mind should ask, you should, uh, your mind should tell you that how you are getting a zero, especially in the case when you are multiplying certain number. So think like this, how to obtain a zero, how to obtain a zero. So the question says next is that, so which all number, which all numbers should multiply or which two numbers should multiply will produce zero in the end, in the end. So which, which all, which all, which all number will multiply together? One is five, two or two, five, two and five, four. Four. Oh, sorry, it's a four and five according to her. Four, five. Uh, four, five will be also there. What else? Beautiful. Six into five will be also there. What else? Twenty-five into two. Beautiful. So she is saying that twenty-five into two is also producing a zero. Perfect. Five eight. Priyansu says that any multiple of uh, ten. I'm very happy, Priyansu. Any multiple of ten. Eight into five. Five. Correct. So I, I want people to stop thinking now and kindly listen to this. What I'm trying to tell. There is something common in all these number if you see. Let me first write the answer and then we'll discuss about it. Yeah, one thing common which mega come up is that, sir, whenever you multiply 5 with any even number, your end or unit digit will be equal to 0. This is what you have learned in unit digit. And all multiple of zeros will be always giving you zeros. Perfect. So let me talk about this, uh, this calculation. 5 into 2 is giving you 10 and there is one zero present here. 4 into 5. If you talk about 4 into 5, can I say that this 4 can be written as this 4, whatever I'm writing, can be written as 2 into 2? So here also, 5 into 2 will give you a 0. Let me talk about this. This 6 will be written as 3 into 2. So if you see that, what is actually responsible to produce a 0 in 2 multiple is that it is either 5 
or a two or a multiple of five over two. What I mean to so this is called as thirty. I have twenty-five. Twenty-five. I I can split it back. It is five into five. So can I say that here also I'm getting a pair of a five. So can I say that here also I got fifty uh, and it is ten. So ten can be written as five into two. So if you talk about it here also you're getting a pair of a five over two. So can I conclude from here that if you talk about a zero produce at the end, the zero will be produced because of a pair of pair of five and a two. I'm teaching very slow. Trust me, I'm teaching very slow. Can I say that zero will be produced when we multiply a five and a two, or in other word, zero will be produced in multiplication because of a pair of a five or a two. Sir, so how about the other extra two? Other extra two is not required. So whenever we talk about the concept of pairing, there are two things responsible in the concept of pairing. Let's say I have fives. Uh, let's say we have twos. Both of the number I have. Let's say five is equal to three. Number of fives equal to three. Number of twos is equal to two. So how many pairs are possible from here, my guys? Who will tell me the answer? In this case, if you see that only two pair are possible, why? Because two are only two. Two twos are exhausted. Only two pair. One extra five will not make a pair like this. If I take, I have seven fives. I have uh, ten twos. Then which? How many pair can be formed? How many pair can be formed? Pair can be formed equal to seven. So can I say that number of pair will be equal to the minimum number of occurrence of either two or a five? Minimum number of occurrence of either two or a five. So I think I can write it here. Zero can be obtained because of a pair of five and two, and a pair can be obtained. Pair can be obtained because of list number, because of list number, or the number of pair will be equal to number of the list occurrence. Let me write it in a proper way. So if I talk about it, let me give it here. So number of pairs will be equal to number of pairs will be equal to. the number of number of least occurrence so what what do you mean by least occurrence least occurrence means the things which will occur for the least number of time number of pair will be equal to number of pair will be equal to number of least occurrence so i will be going into the problem solving i'll be taking the problem now whatever things you need to know to learn i have already told you only thing i'll be doing after this is that i'll be exposing you to the questions so it is very small topic ha huh, there is application of this topic which i'll be discussing with you let me come back with a problem of a board mass question will be find the number of find the number of trailing zeros in following question number 1 38 into 43 into 29 into 73 How many trailing zeros are possible here? Who will tell me the answer? Zero or none? Zero or none is the right answer. Why? Because in order to produce a zero, in order to produce a zero, I need to have a pair of five and two. I can get two from here. If you ask me, if you ask me, this number can produce two. This is nothing but nineteen into two. There is one two present here. This will not produce five. Not neither produce five nor produce two. This will neither produce five nor two. Neither five nor two, so I have only two, but I don't have five anywhere. So I cannot get any zeros from here. I cannot get any zeros from here. So I can say that the number of zeros is none, or I can call it as number of zero is zero in this question. Is that clear to my guys? Next question is thirty-six into forty-nine into fifty-five into sixty-three into one twenty-five. ठीक है देखो ढूंढना क्या है हमको ढूंढना है सिर्फ फाइव एंड टू सो वॉट वी लुकिंग फॉर अपेयर ऑफ फाइव एंड टू सो आई बी आई बी कीपिंग दिस इन माइंड कैन यू ऑप्टेन टू और फाइव यस टू फ्रॉम यर लेट्स ब्रेक इट डाउन इन टू द फैक्टर्स दिस इज नाइन इंटू फोर नाइन इज ऑल नॉट माई इंटरेस्ट फोर विल बी इक्वल टू टू इंटू टू गुड 
This 49 is not of my use. This 55, yes, 55 is of my use. I can get 5. So this can be written as 11 into 5. That's all. Then 63, not of my use. Then 125, yes, 125 will be equal to 5 into 25. Again, 25 will be written as 5 into 5. So is that clear to every one of you? How many 5s are there? If you talk about the 5s column, how many 5s columns are there? 5 are equal to 3 plus 1, 4. How many 2s are there? 2s will be equal to only 2. Now tell me how many pair can be formed. So what should be your answer? Your answer should be definitely equal to 2, if I'm not wrong. So if anyone who is getting more than less than 2 is wrong answer. And I hope this concept which I want to demonstrate on the screen is very much clear to my guys. Let's take our next level of question. 365 into 44 into 385 into 120. That's all. 120. That's all. So can I say that every one of my people are good with it? They will go back and find here how many five will be there. So this will be five into some number. Five into which number? Five to divide though. That is seven and 173. So this is not of my use. Gone. So this will giving definitely it will be 11 into 4. So 4 is of my interest, 11 is of not interest. This will be equal to 2 into 2. Here it is 385, so it will be definitely 5 into some number. Which number? 7 ja 35. Uh, 7 ja 35. So this will be not of your use. Again, 1, 5 will be there. 120 can be written as 2 into 60. 60 can be written as 2 into 30. 30 can be written as 2 into 15. 15 can be written as, see this is very carefully, 15 can be written as 5 into three so ultimate aim of mine is to check how many fives are there just i'm doing as a beginner and how many twos will be there i'll not be doing all those drama in examination in examination you guys know how to tackle this kind of problem directly you can go back and see the numbers so if i count the number of fives we have one two three if you count the number of twos definitely more than three it is two four uh, okay three plus two five so I hope you can able to get the pair of it. How many pair will be possible? So number of pair will be equal to number of pair will be equal to three. Hence number of zeros, number of zeros will be also equal to three. This this simple question is there. Now do do you think that this kind of question in examination uh, in in the examination they ask this kind of question? Do you guys believe that? In examination, people will even touch this kind of question. 120% no. This is just to tell you how the theory is, what the theory is. So, which kind of question they expect in examination? If a question will be coming from this topic, the question will be definitely coming from factorial. Trust me, question will be coming from factorial. Factorial ke taraf se question aata hai. Theek hai? So, how does the factorial question look like? I'll give you one example and then I'll give you one question for you to try. And after that, trust me, your questions are done. There's nothing that you should worry about. This question once upon came into CAT examination, this 100 factorial, and from there it started repeating a lot of time in TCS examination during 2012, 13, and 14. So this 100 factorial, what they asked, they asked find the number of zeros. If they asked to find the number of zeros, this is one of the very important questions of your aptitude. What you should do, you should count the number of twos. Now, two will be produced because of what? Two will be produced because of two. Or before that, let me tell you how you can understand this. If you want to understand, you don't know anything from beginning, I'm a scratch, I'm telling you. This 100 factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 into 7 into all the number till 100. It's not possible for me to write all the numbers, so I'm just uh, cutting this out here. Now, whether three is of my use, if, if I'm in place of you, whether three is of my use, whether three is of any good use number, no. Six, yes. Seven, no. Eight, yes. Nine, no, no, no. All the multiple of three not required. All the multiple of seven not required. All the multiple of other prime number not required. So what is required for me? For me, required is nothing but called as two and its multiple and five and its multiple. So let me first talk about two is multiple. Two will be two. 4, 6, 8, 
10, 12, 14, so on till 100. Then we'll be having something called as 5 multiple. 5 will be 5, 10, 15, 20, we have 25, so on till 100. Now let me let me ask you one question. Which will have more number present in 100? Whether the number of 2s will be more? Number of 2s will be more. Whose number will be more? Number of 2s or number of 5s? 120% number of 2s will be more. Why, sir? Because the frequency of 2 is shorter. It's, 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 it's more frequent. So since frequency of 2 will be more, so we will by default understand that. We will by default assume that whatever number of 5 will be there, definitely 2 will be more than that. And we have learned that the number of zeros will be because of the smaller uh, less less number getting present in the story. So I my entire focus here will be to count how many pipes are there. How many pipes are there? So how to count that, sir? There is one of the beautiful method of counting it off is that count out count out all the count out all the uh, multiple of something called as five. How to count out all the multiple of fives? You did not do anything else. You did not do anything else. You have to take and divide the number by five. How many times? 20 times. And this 100 gone. You need not, in this chapter, you need not to worry about uh, remainder. In this chapter, you will be worried about what? 20. So your answer will not be equal to 20. 20 will not be equal to uh, is the answer. Then you check whether quotient is more than, uh, quotient is more than five. Yes. If quotient is more than five, again take the quotient and divide it by, divide it by five. How much you'll get? You'll get four. And again check whether quotient is more than five. No. The moment the question is not more than five, you should stop. You should stop. After getting stop, you already calculated one of the quotient as 20. Another quotient is equal to four. So total answer will be equal to 20 plus four is equal to 24. I believe a lot of people have got this understanding. So this 20 I understood because of 5, 10, 15, 20 till, till we have the 20th multiple. Till we have the 20th multiple. So if you if you take one number from here, one number, one five will be from here, one five will be from here, one five from here. Like this, you keep counting, there will be 25. This everyone understood. Sir, how come this four is coming? From where this four is coming? If you want to understand, this four is coming because of a number like 25, 50, 75, and 100. So if you talk about it, this is because of five square and its family. So if we talk about 25, 25 is equal to 5 into 5. 1, 5 you have counted. How about the 1 extra 5? So 1 extra 5 counted. 50 will be equal to 5 in, uh, sorry, 5 into 5 into 2. That's 50. 1, 5 I have counted here in 20. Another 5 I have to count. So another 5 is available. Similarly, one more 5 will be coming from here. One more 5 will be coming from here. So that's how the another 4, 5 are present on the story. So if you ask me to tell it the things, a shortcut or a best method to solve, you need not to worry the moment you'll get the number. You need not to even write all those things. Just take the number, divide the number by how much, five, how many times, 20 times, check whether the percent is more or less, it is more. Then take another percent and divide it by how much, divided by five. Yeah, how many times, four times, whether the percent is more than divisor, no, stop. The moment the percent is not more than a divisor, stop and add everything else. If you add everything else, how much you'll get? 24. So your answer will be equal to 24. And now let me tell you, earlier for this question, TCS used to give two and a half minute. Then they made two, and two minute, 25 second. Now, if you, if I told you this technique, can I say that everyone can solve this problem within 10 seconds? 10 seconds is more than enough, sir. Okay, let me give you one question, then you can talk about it. I have 121 factorial. And I want you people to find the I want you people to find the number of zeros in 121 factorial. How many of you can find the number of zeros in 121 factorial? Give me the answer faster. I hope everyone understood how to do it. You have to just take the number 121. You divide it by how much? Five. How many times? It will be done. Five twos are ten. And uh, what is the number we have? Ten and uh, carry will be two. So five fours are twenty. So again, I'll take twenty-four. I'll divide it by five. How many times it will be done by four times? 24 plus 4 will be equal to how much? 28. And this is your answer. I don't think even 10 seconds is required if you are good at finding the quotient faster.
ha huh. now question will be there in the mind sir what to do with the remainder when i divide 24 by 5 you need not to worry about remainder guys you need not to worry about remainder if you ask me the one you need not to worry about remainder that's not required if you want to understand why it is not required because see this 24 and this 4 extra from where it is coming this is coming because of 25 50 75 and 100 so that number is not required that number itself is remainder is not required in this kind of uh, understanding remainder will not be of uh, any use is that clear chalo aage dekhte hain question i have 243 factorial how many number of zeros will be there in 243 factorial this is the last practice question of this type iske baad main thoda advanced question pe jaunga i'll go to a difficult uh, cat level kind of question or kind of a question where you need to put your brain chalo isme wait nahi karunga ko samjhane se hai nahi i'll take the number here that is 2 43 i will divide it by 5 how many times i can divide it it will be 5 4 20 20 then uh, 4 and 3 8 48 ab 3 bach gaya uska koi use hai nahi trust me what is this till 240 is the only number which is a multiple of 5 241 242 243 these three number will not produce 5 so do you remember when you divide 243 by 5 the remainder will be equal to 3 and one of my uh, my one of my brother have asked sir how about this 3 what about this 3 this 3 will not give you any 5 this 3 will not give you any 5 so ignore it so what you will do ignore it is that clear to every one of you now let me talk about the next part of story Now I got forty-eight. Forty-eight is more than five. Yes. So divided divided by how much? Five. How many times, sir? Nine times. Again, ask one of my people. Those are getting forty fifty-seven uh, is wrong answer. Why wrong answer? Because they stopped here only, and they forgot to check it. Every time after getting quotient, check whether quotient is greater than whether the quotient which you are getting is greater than five or not. If five, then do the division again. Please do the division again. Did it. How many times, sir? One time. Is one is greater than five? No. Now you will stop. Add everything else. If you add nine plus one, ten plus forty-eight, it will be equal to fifty-eight, and your final answer will be equal to fifty-eight. Is that clear, guys? All of you able to understand? All of you clear with the things which I am teaching you guys in the class? One raised to power one into two raised to power two. Into three is power three into dot 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 ninety nine raised to power ninety nine. Find the number of trailing zeros. That's a question. Again, same thing. Since all the continuous numbers are there from one to ninety nine, two's frequency will be more than five. Is that clear to every one of you? I want you people to now stop stop commenting. Come back here. Can I say that two's frequency will be more than five? So I'll not be counting the frequencies of two. I'll be assuming. I'm not always assuming. I'm just thinking with my logic that twos will be appearing more number of times than the five. So ignore two. Only concentrate upon five. If one is power one, two is power two, three is power three. So all the multiple of five, like which is the first multiple five. On the top, the same number five. The next multiple will be ten. Rest power ten. The next multiple will be fifteen. Rest power fifteen. The next sum multiple will be twenty. Rest power twenty. Like this will be having the last multiple as ninety five. Rest to power ninety five. Is that clear to my guys? ये कहानी सबको समझ में आ गया पहले? कोई बात नहीं तब ले आप देखो ninety five तो होगा ही नहीं ninety five से ज़्यादा होगा क्योंकि if you can see this there are five five from here only. If you can brought it back into the smaller number two let's see two are present here also so definitely two will be more than five. Two is power ten into five is power ten. This will be the answer of ten is power ten. So there will be ten five from there. If you brought it back into the smaller part, this five is power five is power fifteen into three is power fifteen. So like this, this will be five is power twenty. This will be four is power twenty. So two is also present here. So last will be nineteen is power ninety five into five is power ninety five. So if you see this one off, see uh, see this one, guys. This is five five here. This is ten five here. If we talk about this fifteen five, so how many five is here? Five. The next number of five is ten. 
then we have 15, then we have 20, then we have dot 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 till which number 95. So are, are, are you able to understand something? This is a form of a series. This is a form of a series. We call it as a progressive series called as whenever the difference between the series are same, we call them as AP. So can I say that they are forming an AP series? Now AP series, I want to find how many such pipes are there, means sum. Sum of this series. Sum of this series formula will be that n by 2 full uh, bracket of first term plus last term. Now only thing is that I have to check how many n will be there. Multiple of 5 till 95, which is this multiple, this is 19th multiple. So 19 n will be there. I hope you understand what I am doing on the story. So this will be 19 divided by 2, 19 divided by 2, first term is 5 and last term is 95 is equal to 100. So this will be equal to 19 into 5 is equal to 95 with 1 0 is equal to 950. How many of you got the answer as 950? How many of you got the answer as 950? Well, let me tell you 950 is the wrong answer. 950 is not right answer. Whatever you people are thinking this is wrong answer. Now what is wrong in this answer sir? Where we are going wrong? If, if I'm not wrong, a lot of my people already figured it out by themselves where they're going wrong. They have considered this number and they have considered 25, 5. 25 is for 25 can be written like this. 5 is for 25 and 5 is for 25. So this 25 is counted in this series. This 25 is counted in this series. How about this 25? Who will count this? Similarly, 50 will be also coming up with the same 50. This will be equal to 5 is for 50 into 5 is for 50, uh, sorry, I'll be writing it again. So I, ho I hope you guys can, I, I hope you guys can see this 5 is for 50, 150 is counted, how about other 50, some will go to 75. So extra 25 fives plus 55 plus 75 five will be also added. So this will be added, add it up, how much you'll be getting from here, 150, 950, I've already got extra 150, 950 plus 150 is equal to 1100. This 1100 is the right answer. Those who have got this 1100, they are the only one who is actually thinking with me. Last one, I will tell you. So can I inspect my guys that, see to this very carefully. Are you guys clear with this part of story? Everyone of you able to see that, everyone able to understand this part of story. Everyone can feel that this is 5. From where? From 5. This 10 is coming from 10. This 15 is coming from 15. This 20 is coming from 20. This 25 is coming from 25. And in 25, actually, there are two fives. In 25, actually, there are two five. One five I have counted here. How about the second five? That I'll count separately. Why? Because, uh, brother, understand five square is equal to 25, which is written as five into five. Now, five into five is for if you write 25 on the top, this will be brought back into five is for 25 into five is for 25. Is that clear to everyone of you? This 25, my people have counted. How about this 25? Who will tell the answer of this 25? This 25, I will count separately here. That is why I am counting it separately, guys. Question number one hai. So how many trailing zeros will be there in this question? So the question is 23 factorial, 43 factorial, 87 factorial, plus 13 factorial. How many trailing zeros will be there in this question? Again, I am telling you, you cannot get the right answer. Prove me wrong if you can. I, I, I just wanted to understand one question before you solve this. If I will add 10 and 100, what is the answer we will be getting? 110. So how many zeros will be getting here? One zero. Let me take one more example. If I'm adding hundred and thousand, I'll be getting thousand one hundred. How many zeros will be getting? Two zeros. If I'm adding ten, hundred, and thousand, how many zeros I'll be getting? I'll be getting one thousand one hundred ten one zero. Whether something went in your head. Trailing zeros I'm talking about, guys. I'm not talking about anything else. This is not of your use, which is the smallest number. If you see this carefully, two, because the smallest number will be having two zeros. One, because smallest number is having one zero. Ten, the smallest number is having one zero. So trailing zeros will be also because of the smallest number of zeros in addition. So which number have the smallest number of zeros? Thirteen. How many zeros it will have? Two. So what is your answer? Your answer is equal to two. Is that clear to every one of you? And this kind of a question, this kind of a question is a beautiful question which will be a part of aptitude paper. Agla question depo. Ye dekhe bata jaldi se aapko kya answer aata hai. 43 factorial into 
27 factorial into 3 factorial. Tell me how many trailing zeros will be here. Now I'll give you only one minute. Who will tell me the answer of one uh, this question within one minute? Let me give you the same example again. See this very carefully. 10 into 100. 10 into 100 is equal to 1000. 100 into 1000. 100 into 1000 will be equal to 10,000. What exactly is happening, guys? If you are if you are smart enough, you can figure it out. This is not addition. This is multiplication. If the number are getting multiplied, the number of trailing zeros are getting added. The number of trailing zeros are getting added. And if you can see this very carefully, right? So, so I'll go back and find the number of zeros here. I'll go back and find the number of zeros here. I'll go back and find the number of zeros here also and add all of them. How many zeros will be getting here? Eight plus one nine. How many zeros will be getting here? Five plus one six. The answer is nine plus six is equal to fifteen. This is. 5 to 10 second question if you know this concept even 10 second is too much so i guess this will be enough for the day this will be the some kind of a, these are the kind of a question which you can expect in examination as i said smart question up practice karo thank you very much for being with me today i hope you have learned something new today in the class also